So you've done some great multi-track acoustic drum recording in your studio. The band loves them. They've long since tore down. The sessions have long since ended. They come back weeks, maybe even months later and want to add completely new sections of work. Only they want the exact same tone they got during those sessions and they don't have the same hardware setups any longer. I'm going to show you how to do it. Hey guys, it's Steve from Featherlight and it's been a busy summer. We've done a lot of drum recording here at the studio and I get asked about this from time to time. And I thought it would be an interesting video to see how we kind of deal with this circumstance. So here's the setup. You've done a lot of multi-track acoustic drum recordings and the client loves them, everybody's happy, so they tear down and the sessions have long since ended. And then they come back weeks, maybe months later, and they wanna add new material or make structural changes to those original drum recordings, only they no longer have the original hardware that was used during those sessions. And they want the tone to be exactly the same. So let's take a quick look at some of Steinberg's drum manipulation technology inside of Cubase that will allow us to match the songs exactly and those tones exactly without even having to have the drum set in the room in the first place. Let's check it out. This is something that we do for every single multi-track drum recording we do here at the studio. And we've done this for every album we've done over the last 20 years. And that is to do a drum sampling session at the end of the raw tracks right after the initial recording. So once they've approved the initial recording and the band likes it, and it's the version they want on all that, then immediately we go after that and record kick and snare and crashes left and right and hats and all of those things. And that just gives us the ability to do some quick overdubs if we need to punch something in or if we need to cut and paste something in after the fact. But this next technique goes way beyond that. We actually wanna build a completely playable drum set from the original drummer's performance. So this is done before we do anything else, before we tear the kit down, before we move any of the mic positions, before we change any of the hardware. And we go through and we sample every piece on the kit in multiple velocities. This is a fairly quick process, and with the drummer already in the room, with everything exactly the way the session went, this goes quite quickly through each one of the categories. It's the drummer's own feel, an attack and stick style, but it gives us the ability to punch things in later if we need to, or even build completely new parts altogether. So before we start building our custom drum instrument, we have to do a few things first in order to prepare these tracks to actually be sampled. So the first thing we have to do is remove the gates from the individual tracks. So we had the gates on for toms and snare top and bottom and the kick, but that was for the performance during the recording. When we're gonna sample this, we actually need the gates turned off because we need the very, very quietest sounds sampled. And the second thing we need to do is to make sure that all of the insert and channel strip effects that are on the channel itself are actually intact because we need those to be part of our actual sample sound when we sample that track. However, when we render these tracks down, we will be disabling the bus effects because the samples are going to play back through those existing buses. And we don't want any kind of duplicate processing taking place here. And to accomplish building this instrument, we're going to be making extensive use of Cubase's render in place function. And the reason why we're going to be doing this is because we don't want to destructively edit the samples that we have. So for example, we could take these and simply start cutting these up but we might want to use them for different things in the future. And more importantly, the reason why we're going to be using the render in place feature is because it allows us to make a copy of these samples with their track effects that were active during the session completely intact. And this is important because we want to sample or capture exactly that tone into our multi-sample instrument player, which in this case is going to be Groove Agent. So we're going to start with the toms first, since in this particular session, those are the samples we did first, although you could start with any of the kit pieces, whichever organizational system works best for you. We're going to start by isolating the first rack tom clip. We're going to come up to the edit window and we're going to come down to render in place. We're going to choose render settings and it's important because we have a couple different options here. If we do the dry transfer channel settings, it's just the channel itself and everything is raw tracks. If we choose any of the others, like for example, complete signal path, that goes through all the buses, including the master effects. This goes through all the buses and sends. 
But we're going to choose channel settings, and this includes all the channel strip and insert effects, but it's not going to go through any of the buses or downstream processing, including the masters. We're going to title our track Rack Tom 1. We're going to leave the rest of the settings the way they are at their default. And once we hit the render button, it's going to build an audio track for us, and it's going to have a little R to signify that it's a rendered track. And because the Tom tracks like the kick were heavily gated and didn't include any ambience from the overheads or the room mic, these tracks will be rendered down to mono clips, which will allow us to adjust the panning later. So we've gone ahead and bounced all of the individual Tom tracks into their own renders, and we've cut them up into their appropriate velocities. We're also going to rename all the rendered tracks as sample tracks instead, and then we're going to group them all into their own folder to make management and importing into Groove Agent a lot easier down the road. Moving on to our kick drum sample, it's done exactly like the Tom tracks were done. So we select the part of the kick track that we want to make into a clip or a selection, and we render that part down with the channel settings selected. We rename it kick sample, and then we render the part down. From here, we can cut up the individual kick samples into their respective velocities to make importing into Groove Agent a lot easier. When it comes to sampling or rendering down our snare sample, it has a few more considerations than our kick and tom samples did. And the reason why is because the kick and tom samples were heavily gated for this particular session, and they didn't actually use any of the overhead or room ambience that the rest of the kit did, but our snare used that extensively. So we're gonna group select all the the tracks in our snare sample location. In our render selection dialog box, we're going to make the same choice we did last time and choose channel settings, which is going to include all of the channel strip and insert settings, but none of the buses themselves. We're also going to rename this particular sample, so we'll call this snare top and bottom sample. And you'll also notice that we have an additional option to check here, and that's the mix down to one audio file option. What that means is it's going to take all of those tracks we selected for the entire drum kit, and it's gonna mix them all down to one stereo file. And that's gonna include all that extra and additional ambience, including the room mic and the overheads that the snare needs to replicate the exact same sound that we had during those original sessions. Once the render process finishes, you can see that we've mixed all of those tracks down to one stereo file. This gives us one sample that we can easily manipulate inside a Groove Agent that includes all those original ambiences that were so important to create the snare sound to begin with. With the kick, toms, and the snare with all of its special considerations completely rendered down and ready for sampling, it's time to move on to the rest of the kit. Keep in mind that we're not trying to create the ultimate playable drum kit for every scenario, just an exact duplicate of this particular session. If we were using a different kit from a different session, our kick and tom samples might have included more of that original room and overhead ambience. However, when it comes to the rest of the kit for our crashes left and right, our hi-hats and additional cymbals, we will need that additional drum room ambience included as part of our rendered down samples. So the same thing applies here. We're going to select our cymbal destination tracks, which includes our overhead left, right, and drum room. And just like with the previous samples, we're going to isolate the area of our first sample, which is going to be our crash left. So we're going to isolate all the velocities of those. We'll group select that, and then we'll come up to our render in place feature. We're going to make the same choices that we did before. We're going to keep it at our channel settings option, and we're going to leave the mix down to one audio file box checked, as this will include all three tracks in our finished stereo file result. Once the render is complete, we can see that we have our finished stereo file, which includes all three tracks of ambience. And from here, we simply repeat this process for all the additional kit pieces that include all the overhead ambiences like our hi-hat, our ride cymbals, all the additional crashes. Now that all of our individual kit pieces have been rendered down into their own files, and they're ready to be sampled. We've done a little bit of housekeeping and we've cleaned all of them up and placed them into their own folders. This is really just to make it a lot easier to import them into Groove Agent. And we've renamed that folder Kit Sample Renders. And additionally, we've also rerouted each individual sample back to its appropriate bus. So for example, the snare goes back to the snare bus. All the symbols go back to the overheads bus, kick goes to the kick bus. And this just allows us to test each sample and confirm that the sounds we're getting through the original buses sounds exactly the same way as the sessions did. Be 
And with all of our housekeeping completed, it's time to add an instance of Steinberg's very capable Groove Agent. So we're going to right-click on our track here, and we're going to choose Instrument. We'll come up and select Groove Agent from the drop-down menu. Groove Agent is incredibly powerful, and the SE version is available in all the different versions of Cubase. So we're going to title this Drum Kit, and then we add the track and it'll add this into our session. In its default state, there's nothing on the pads itself, but there's just a huge variety of things to choose from here. You can explore this to your heart's content. There's a ton of content in here, a ton of kits and other things you can choose. But one of the things that Groove Agent does incredibly well is make it very easy to use your own samples and create your own custom drum kits. However, Groove Agent expects to see those samples, especially multi-samples, if you're gonna place them all on one pad, in a particular order. So before we start dragging the samples to pads, we need to make sure that we bounce each individual clip to itself to give it a unique name and to disassociate it from other clips in the media pool. If we just grab one sample and drag it onto a pad, we see we have three different options here. The top one gives us the option to load multiple samples onto that one pad. The second option here gives us the option to replace a sample that's already on the pad with the one we're dropping. And the bottom option, if you have group selections of more than one sample, we'll drop each one of the samples on a consecutive pad. If we group select all of these, what we want is all four velocities on the same pad, and we want them to play in the order of the velocities. However, when we sampled these originally, in this particular session, our drummer played the velocities from the loudest one to the softest one. And if we just group select them in that order and drop them onto a pad, Groove Agent's default velocities will actually be backwards, playing the loudest one first. So we're gonna put the quietest ones first, and we're gonna have the loudest ones last. Now Groove Agent will actually load the samples onto the pad in the order at which we select them from left to right. So group select all of these, drop them on the top option here, the plus sign, and it's loaded all of our samples. So now the lowest velocity will play at the quietest part of the pad, followed by the second one, now the third one. This process makes it very quick and dirty to add multiple samples to a pad and get the velocities just right. And in addition, each one of these strikes can have the sample start time set independently of each other. So we wanna clean those up real quick so that they start immediately when we strike a pad or a key. And now these are gonna be really responsive when we play our pads, whether it's directly from a mouse or we play it from a controller. And then we can actually do several different things from this point. We can change things like its panning position. We can change the tuning of it, the volume for each one of the pads themselves. But like we talked about before, we don't really wanna change anything about the sounds, especially since these sounds were recorded with those insert channel effects intact. Now it's time to move on to our snare samples that have been rendered down and include all of those ambiences that we had selected so that our snare will faithfully represent our original session. So just like the kick track, we have our different velocities only on our snare here, we actually have five different velocities from highest to lowest. So we wanna get all of that in, but we have to bounce these first. So just like the kick, they're disassociated from the other clips and have their own identity in the media pool. And then we also have to reorder these just like the kick so that they're in the order that we want them to appear on the pad. So the loudest sample is gonna be the last and then the next one second to the last and so forth. So just like before, as we drag these in, now we can group select them, drag them onto a pad, choose the top option and they all show up here in the correct order they're supposed to be, going from quietest to loudest. So the first thing we wanna do, just like the kick, is we wanna adjust the start position so that it's nice and responsive for each one of these. And because we have five samples, we have a few more. We can also adjust the sample end time as well as creating a nice smooth fade out so everything dies out perfectly. And so the snare samples aren't nearly as long as like the toms, for example. So we do wanna get all the room ambience involved that we can, but we don't wanna cut anything off. So we're gonna put all of these, this adjusts the actual end of the sample. And then these handles here adjust our fade out points. This is also true for the beginnings but we're not gonna ramp anything. We're literally gonna have these start right when we hit the pad. So it's really just the fade out handle that we'll be adjusting here. So now it's time to move on to our rack toms and we're gonna to assign them to this row up here. We'll put the rack tom one, two, three, and floor toms here just to make things a little easier as far as playability, but you could put them in any order that you wanted to really. So we'll start with the top rack tom. 
we'll bounce that to itself again for the other velocities and we have to do the same thing that we did before with the kick and the snare we need to adjust the lowest velocity first so that when we select these groove agent will know where to put them so these are a little close we need a little bit more room there all right so that's all four velocities of our first rack tom we're going to group select those and we're going to drop them on the first pad in our second row on the plus sign. And we're going to take a look at the start times of each of the samples here. Let's look at the second one. Not bad. Third and so on. That one needs a bit of adjustment. So now we have a pretty nice velocity sensitive playable rack tom. All right, we repeat that same procedure with all four toms, but we have a few different options that we have to complete with the toms that we didn't have with the kick and the snare, and that's its panning position. So in our original mix, the panning position for rack tom one, we haven't set yet, but we can come back here and check and see that it was at right at about 30. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna set that to that same value so that we play that rack tom it occupies the same panning position that our original mix did when those original samples were made and when our drummer created that original track. Now we just repeat that same process for all the remaining toms in our session. Now moving on to the rest of the kit and our cymbals, we're actually gonna put them probably on the top row here in a particular order just to make it a bit more playable. We're gonna start with our ride cymbals. And the same thing applies here since they were recorded highest to the lowest. This only has three velocities here. It looks like our drummer at the time only recorded three of those. So we're gonna bounce those and then we're gonna put them in the correct order so the velocities play lowest velocity to the highest velocity. I'm gonna select those as a group and we're gonna drop these on the pads directly above them here. And then we'll adjust the start time. So these are all nice and responsive here. And now we have our playable ride. And as we add each one of the symbols, the symbols were recorded with the correct ambience and panning position. So they don't need any additional adjustment from here. They're already going to be in the right panned position. So our left crashes are going to be to the left side, right crashes are going to be the right side, and so on. So we just keep repeating this process for the rest of the kit pieces in the drum set until we have a completed playable drum set of our exact session that was recorded on that day in the studio. So now that we have all the samples assigned to their respective pads, we've got all the velocity set, we've got the balance of the toms in place, and we've smoothed out all the sample endpoints. We still need to do one last thing before we can match this kit, this playable drum set we've built here, to the exact same sounds that we had on the day we recorded this session. And that is we need to take advantage of the individual outputs that Groove Agent provides. Now, even though Groove Agent itself has an incredibly sophisticated mixer system with its own aux buses and all the same VSTs that you have on your system. We don't want to add any additional layers to this instrument. We want it to be as pure as possible so that it is literally the same instrument we actually tracked on the day of the session. So in its default configuration, Groove Agent sends all of its sounds out the main output. So we don't want that, obviously. We want to be able to send them out their own individual outputs so that we can bus them back to the original sends and buses that we used during the day of the session. And thankfully, Groove Agent makes this super easy to do. If we simply click on the pad we want to change, if we right click and go down to assign output, we can actually assign the output of that pad to its own output. And you'll notice when we did that, Groove Agent automatically created its own output track so that makes this really quick and dirty for us to be able to assign things where they need to go as Groove Agent is going to create these tracks or channels for us automatically. So for example, if we want all the toms to go out their toms channel, let's make the toms channel number three. You'll see that it creates that channel for us automatically. We'll do the same thing for the rest of the toms. And we want to put all the symbols, for example, out into the overheads bus. We want to be able to bust them back to that original group. We're going to right click and we're going to use output four for that purpose. 
Once we have all the pads assigned to the new tracks that GrooveAgent has created for us, all that's left to do is to assign those new tracks back to their original buses that existed on the day of that recording session. So now GrooveAgent's main output that just has kick goes back to our original kick bus. Our snare top and bottom sound is going to go out the original snare bus that we created during that session. The toms are going to go out the toms bus we created for that session. And all of our cymbals and everything else, including hi-hats, are going to go out the overheads that we created for that original session. And that allows us to recreate exactly the bus path we used during those original sessions. We now have a fully playable drum kit that's a replica of the kit we had during that session and it follows all the same effects paths that we had as well. So this allows the drummer a lot of options to be able to come back in and instead of just pasting a kick or a snare when needed, actually build completely new creative parts without having to sacrifice any of the original sound or tonality of that drum kit on that day. So that's a quick look at Steinberg's drum manipulation technology inside of Cubase and how it can really save you when it comes to things like this where you have to match tones you've done for sessions that have long since ended. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me, you guys, today. If you learned something or if this was helpful in any way, please hit the subscription and notification bells. It really does help get the channel going. Stay safe, be creative, add something creative to the world. It could really use it. Take care, we'll catch you guys in the next video.